So our presenter tonight, Grace Archibald, our district meetup expert. Grace, thanks for being here. Over to you. Thank you so much, Chris, and thank you for organizing this evening. So good evening, everybody. So glad that you can make it. I see some familiar faces or names anyway. <laughs> so it's great to see you all here. And I hope that the ones that are here tonight had the opportunity to either attend the meetup workshop we had in December or was able to look at the YouTube recording of it. And if you weren't able to attend or have the recording, I could certainly post the link to that in the chat for you later on. And also as well as Chris mentioned, we're here to talk about Meetup and how we can add co-organizers because that's always a great thing. Why should the onus be only on the division directors to get everything posted? Put it back on the club and let them, they do best to advertise themselves, right? So today we're going to be looking at that. So I'm just going to give a little bit of an overview just before we get into actually doing real life examples. So as you know, running Meetup, hard thing to do. We're going to try and make it easier today. So on Meetup, they have the opportunity to create a leadership team. And in this case, the leadership team consists of four different roles. The first is the organizer, which would be you guys. You run the whole Meetup group. You have access to everything. You can appoint people and also look after the money part of things. Then you have the co-organizer. They have all the abilities that the organizer does, except basically touching the money. So that's always good. <laughs> and then you have the assistant organizer, and they're able to manage the calendar and communications, but they are not able to access some of the settings. So they're a little bit limited in what they can do. And then you have the event organizer. They have limited control of the meetup group, and um, they're able to look at the calendar and also send emails. So the one that we'll be focusing on is that of the co-organizer because they would be able to post events for everybody. So I'm just going to tell you the process and then I'm actually gonna go through a real life example for you guys so you see how it actually works. So first so of Grace, all- So Grace, can I just ask something so that yeah. my mind is in the right spot? Because okay. this is informal so I can pause. So yeah. who, would be, who would be the person in the club would the person in the club be the co-organizer? Yes. Okay. So the club, usually it will probably be the VP of PR or whoever they want to appoint if they feel mm -hmm. that someone else would do a better job at it. So whoever the club appoints, that would be the co-organizer that you would be putting in. So okay. there's two things that you need for this to occur. The person that is appointed by the club should have a meetup profile and they should actually join your meetup group. Once they have, you're able to make them a co-organizer. And if you wanted, uh, um, if the people don't know how to sign up for Meetup or anything like that, in a Google Drive link that I will also be sharing with you, has um, a sheet that actually, a document that actually says all that you need to know to create a profile. And there is the sheet that I use to make people co-organizers, where it's basically like laying out the ground rules, because when you are core organizer, one thing about it is you can see everything that happens. You get notifications about everything. So say Renee is creating an event, I'll get a notification about that because I'm a co organizer And say if a new person gets added to the group, you'll get a notification about that. And trust me, on a daily basis, I at least get 20 emails from Meetup about what other people are doing. Just ignore it and concentrate on your own thing because that's the most important thing. And if ever anything comes up where someone accidentally touches someone else's event, make sure that those people notify their people and let them know I actually did this, letting you know so they can fix it right away because you know accidents happen. You might accidentally delete someone else's event, which we hope never happens, but if it does, you can let them know so it can get fixed right away. So let's get to it. So, Say you have somebody, they've been appointed, they've signed up for, they have their own profile, they've signed up for your group. Now, having a hard time actually finding the group, you can actually send them the link for the group, which I'll show you how to do later in the actual example. And so once they've actually been a member of the group, 
they will let you know that they are a member of the group or you'll even receive a notification that a new people new person joined the group and you would go on the page and you would go to the members list you'd search for that particular member once their profile is there they have the option of a message box and they also have three dots beside it so we would want to click on those three dots and it gives you the option to either remove the person from the group or um, change their member role. And of course we wanna change their member role. And there it will give you the three options of the co-organizer, the assistant organizer, and the event organizer. So of course you wanna pick the co-organizer. When you do, it will ask you to submit the update. And at that point, it'll ask you, do you wanna notify this person that they've been made a co-organizer? Of course we do. We want to share the love with everybody. So we want them to know that they are a co-organizer. And it will actually pop up with a pre-made email notifying them of that. And you can make any changes or add anything you want to that email and send it out and they will know. And they will have all the ability to be a co-organizer. So yes, Jennifer, you're on mute. Before you go any further. Yes. That's a lot of information. And yeah. I know a little bit but you know it a lot and I don't think any of us do. Does anyone well, else? Well, that's where the actual yeah. example comes in. What I do need example, I'm just telling you guys ahead of time to know what to expect. Okay. So before, we, example, before we get to that, all. can I yeah. ask one general question? Yes. So is everyone in the similar situation to me? For example, Division E has one for all the different clubs. Is that what you're doing? No. It's different. No, there are three other meetup accounts that are shared by the other eight divisions because okay. their geographic area is infinitely smaller. But we're we're all in the same situation where there's one that has all the groups. Multiple in it. groups, yes. Right. So we're all going to be in that situation. That's yes. correct. Okay. All right. Got it. So like, because because like for Division E, right? Because we're paying for it for ourselves, we have the three different groups for the geographical areas. By the rest of the districts, since they're so close together, they are have within the five. geographical. Yeah. Area. Okay. Yeah. So, for the purposes of tonight, should I be logged in under the Division E profile as opposed to my yes. personal profile? Yeah. Okay. If you want to add a color, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. I just didn't want to mess <laughs> things up. So, okay, okay. go. <laughs> thank you. Okay. No problem. No problem. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead with sharing my screen so I can actually show you an example. So just give me a moment. I'm going to go on my mute because my dog is snoring beside me. Okay. We can't hear him, but that's okay. I have the same problem, Benny. My dog is barking like crazy upstairs. <laughs> Not All right. either. <laughs> um, can everyone see my screen okay? Mm -hmm. All right, great. So we are on the Build Your Confidence with Postmaster Pickering to Oshawa. And we have somebody who has already joined, created a profile and joined the group and they are gonna be a co-organizer. Now I'm using one of my profiles that I had from a while back to show you this example. So as you can see, we have the about, events, members, photos, discussion, and more. So we go to the members and I apologize, my computer's being slow. <laughs> there we go. So we search for the particular member that we're looking for. So we want to search for Chris A. This, this list of members, are they just below you? Are they just random members or are they all from your club? No, this is just random members, people that have joined the group itself. Like they could be um, members of another club because since this is the one for Division E, there's about like, I believe six or seven clubs that are on here that are putting events. So there could be a number of people that are going to different events. And over time, this is what has accumulated who have joined the group over that time. So some of them are members of the actual clubs and then some of them could be guests that have joined, meet up, joined this meetup group so they can attend the event. And I can see Andrew's meetup down there. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, because on Meetup, when they see that you join, say, a group like this, it shows you other similar ones from around the area. Okay, so see, we see Grace A. And as I mentioned, we have the message bubble and we also have the three dots. So we're going to click on the three dots and it gives the option for change member role or remove from the group. So of course, we want to change member role and it's giving us the three options of co-organizer, assistant organizer and event organizer. So of course, we're going to pick co-organizer and we're going to update the role. And then it says, Grace is now a co-organizer. Would you like to send a message informing them? Yes, of course we do. So then it creates this email already set up, basically saying they now have the rights. Now, when I send this out, I actually make a little bit of a change because I don't let them know the tools to help you run the group because they're not running the group. <laughs> So I actually usually change it to the tools to help you create an event for your group. I usually change it to that because they're not running the group. That's the job of the organizer. So just let you know to create events for the group. So I usually make that change before I send it out. And then you could preview the actual message that goes out, which it shows here. And it actually has a link to the actual group and you can send it out. Now, I did mention I was gonna show you how you can send a link to any given person. Now, you can send the link that shows up at the top here where it shows, you can send out that link in an email, any given email, but if you actually click on any given event, so for instance, we have Embassy Toastmasters. If we click on that event, you could actually go to the share button and you could copy the link and you could send that out as well because it'll bring them to the event, but it'll also show them what group that they're a part of as well. So they could end up joining. The so you have those options there. They used to, um, I believe it was maybe a year and a half ago, they actually used to have a invite where you could invite anybody as long as they're on Meetup to a particular event, but they got rid of that option. I wish they still had it because it would make things a lot easier. But <laughs> so you can actually invite people to your group and if they if they aren't able to find it. Because um, for those who attended the workshop, because of their algorithm, it is hard to find certain groups at times. I know that I probably sent emails to some of you asking, could you send me the link because I can't seem to find the group. Because depending on using a computer or if you're using uh, say tablet or phone, you get different search results. So that is, how you can add someone as a co-organizer and find the link to send out. Does anybody have questions? I'm just trying that, Grace, just for experience. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll just stop the share for now. I'm not seeing so any does, questions. Does anybody have any questions in general just about Meetup? that they may be wondering about. I think we've got an attentive bunch trying things on their computer screen. I see very <laughs> focused faces and that's good. Yes, I'll give you guys a few minutes then. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. So if I, want, if I want to invite somebody to join this group. Yes. All I do is send them the, the link and then they go yes. in. And then yes. you mentioned about they need, they need to have an account. Yes. Oh, so set up a profile. Okay. Profile. Yes, how, a profile. How, so how would they go about setting up a profile? That yeah. is actually easy, but I'll put in the link here, the different, 
Okay, so the second um, second link there is actually to the Google Drive, and it has a detailed document on how to control oh, all with okay, the pictures. Okay, okay, okay. I know it's, like when I when I went to the main page, there was a thing called join in mm -hmm. or log yes. in or yeah, join in something like that, right? Okay. Yes. Yes. And also in that same document, it says how. You could be a core organizer. Like I would suggest for all of you, make up that sort of kind of document about becoming a core organizer. Of course, my example it has my email address on it and everything like that. But I would suggest creating your own. So then, if anybody is interested, you could just send out information. Because for our club, I just send out the, all the files at the same time, and then if they have any questions, they can contact me to talk to me more about it. But all the files have how to make a profile how to become a co-organizer, how to create an event, and how to add pictures. Uh, Grace, I, yes. I have a feeling that um, when people join the Division F meetups, I don't really get notified uh, because I do see the number of people, the, the number of people increase, but I don't recall getting messages. And do you have a manager the, of that group? A, well, I'll, yes, because um, sure. because now I I did the exercise to add two of the people I know who have events as co-organizer, okay. and I was able to yes. get email now. I, yes. I just noticed, but I I haven't had notifications, emails of people joining though. Is there a chance that it might be going to your junk mail? Because I know for mine, it sends like a weekly notification saying you have new members in your group. Are you not getting anything like that? Like maybe once a week or something? Uh, I can check, but I I I can check the junk mail. I'm, yeah, because I'm wondering if maybe it went to your junk mail or something. Okay, I'll take a look. Okay. Grace, do those come in with each member as they're added, or is it something that comes in like in a sometimes cumulative? It's, I think it's sometimes cumulative because I get okay. a lot. I notice those sometimes, but they'll be like, you have three new members this week, and it shows like that. This is yeah, what it looks I'll, like. Yeah, because I'll get those all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get these for every single group that I'm a part of, that I'm a co-organizer for, and that's mm -hmm. three, four. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting double track. of everything because I get mm -hmm. one for my division E, and then I get one for me as a co-organizer as myself. Exactly. Yeah, of the embassy one, so I'm getting double. But this is what it should look like. The subject line is always like this. And then this is whatever the name of your group is. So if you're mm -hmm. not sure, it's fully possible this is going to your junk mail. In my mailbox, I have Gmail. It sorts things into inbox, social, and whatever the third heading is, promotional or something. This always goes to social. So if you're using that kind of application, it could be going there. I ended up deleting those two um, applicate like out of my Gmail because it was driving me crazy. <laughs> yes, you did a lot when you're the co-organizer because everyone's doing their own thing. And but yeah. as I said, just ignore the others and concentrate on your own. That's the one right. downfall about it. <laughs> so is everybody adding their own people at the moment? I see everyone looks really invested in what they're doing. <laughs> or are you ready to see Grace do the live example again? Or do you feel like you're confident? Yeah. Put your hand up if you feel confident in what you're doing. I see a half yeah. a hand from Renee. <laughs> <laughs> an elbow from Renee. But she's an <laughs> IT person. <laughs> she should know what she's doing. <laughs> Okay, I can I can certainly do it again if you'd like. Would that be helpful? To try it. Yeah. Okay. Or yes, we can come and try it if you'd like to share your screen, and we can mm -hmm. do it all together. Watch you do it. If screen sharing is enabled that, for everybody. If somebody wants to try and get help, hands on. Grace is right here. Share your screen, and let's have a see. Anyone interested? I'm no using one. my iPad for the video and I'm using a laptop for this, so I can't share screen. Okay. <laughs> I have nobody to add because whoever I have here as members are just be random people. So 
I don't want to add them, right? To be, okay, uh, yeah, no. yeah. So that's why I asked you about like how to for them to set up an account so I can send that link to the other club, the mm -hmm. club president, the VP of Education. I mean, VP of PR, mm -hmm. and then I can then after that go with them I and mean, show them what they need to do, and I'll just send them the uh, the PDFs which you gave us, you share with us in the Google Drive. Mm -hmm. Arthur, Renee, Carrie, do any of you have an organizer that you want to add so that you can practice on screen? Oh, I already he did too. Way to go, Renee. <laughs> oh. <laughs> not, not at this time. I think where I get confused, Grace, is I still get confused about the fact that we've got the group and then we've got the group is everybody. Yeah. The clubs are only identified by their events. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Okay. So, okay. If I share my screen with you again, one second. I think that's where I'm having a hard time getting my head around. And then the confusion is I have a couple of clubs in Division E that have their own. Yes. So that's what makes it more complicated for me, right? I just can't yes. keep it straight. So we're back at the Pickering to Oshawa. And so as you can see here, it has organizer section, right? So we have up to 16 organizers. So did you just click on the organizers there? Yes, yes. Okay, good, I'm there. I, yeah, so it lists all, mine is lagging, my apologies. So it lists all the core organizers. So these are the people from the different clubs who are posting their events. Some people have two, depending on who they appointed, they can appoint more of them. So like, for instance, let's use Embassy is an example because they were there. So we have Louise and we also have Jennifer. So they're both working on that. And say for with the Intrepid, we have Daniel and we have myself. And we also have Diane since Diane and Daniel both, so she's membership is PR. So they both look after all of that. And since I created the groups, also a co-organizer there too as well. So, and for instance, we just had Pushma that added herself on the 31st and she's starting to add events so almost every club in some areas ha have their representatives it could be one it could be two so that's why there's 16 in this particular group. so grace so those, yes since this is division e so when i look through the list that i've got from my club from my area directors this is okay. where I can see if they're already in as a co-organizer, yes, right? Yes, and then if yes. they're not, then I search them out and make them a co-organizer. Yes. Okay, so that's what I'll do first is look through this list and see who isn't in there and yes. should be. And if, yes, so then you could always be like, do you already have, you could go back to them and be like, do you have a profile set up? And then right. ask them to join the particular group. Okay, thank you. That works best for so, so would the first thing that uh, a division director would do would to be to ask their area directors if they would be comfortable setting up a profile in Meetup? Well, the club members, the club members, I would say. Well, the area directors could do that as well if they're but, going to be but, helping but out it, their club. But, but um, Jennifer was just talking about her area director setting up a profile oh no i think no no what i mean the is club. the area directors actually gave me their lists of their clubs and who their people oh. are who's on so okay. i'm working from their lists and going okay are they really on as a core organizer or do they need to be okay so maybe so uh therefore to ask the area directors to speak with their clubs and see who would like to be a co-organizer and that that the area director division director would help set that up would that be the the move to make yes you can set it up that way because probably what would be a good idea they could actually the area director could provide the information that they received from the division director with the particular files because what i did in the beginning i sent out the files about how to create and the other files about how to create events and everything like that. I sent that to the area directors so they knew about it. So if anybody was interested, they could send that information directly to them or they just gave them my email address and I ended up sending that information to them. Okay. 
But just thinking about the, the user journey of this, Grace. So, um, for example, I'm, I'm visiting, I'm an area director. I'm visiting the clubs that I've just come into contact with now. And I'm encouraging all of them to be on Meetup because it's worked mm -hmm. brilliantly for my club. So I know from yeah. personal experience it works. So I can say confidently to every single VPPR that I meet, I think this is really valuable and I would give it a go. Mm -hmm. The very first step is for the VPPR to create a profile on Meetup. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's, except, that's, except, Andrew, your corporate clubs can't use Meetup. Right. That's the only thing. Anybody that it's not closed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Good. Gr great distinction. Thank you. Absolutely. So I, I, I need to, for the two community clubs, I need to stress the VPPR. I really strongly recommend you create a profile. And then as soon as you create a profile, you speak to Omar or speak to, yeah, speak to Omar to mm -hmm. start the process, yeah? yeah? And then as soon as he's pulled you into area A or whatever that umbrella is called, Mm -hmm. then the individual VPPRs can start posting the events yeah. and their meetings on a regular basis. Yeah. Right. So Grace, yeah. as I go through this and I'm looking, I'm seeing names that are on here that are probably previous co-organizers. So for example, um, I know that, I think you and I have talked about this before, lunchtime talkers, mm -hmm. um, Carolyn Willman is interested in weird, right? But when yeah. I look, I see Bob Weiss on there as a co-organizer. So he's probably the previous co-organizer. Yes, he actually is. Yeah, because he joined last year. Yeah. So, and I know Carolyn is interested. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if maybe she might be talking to him or what's going on. Yeah, we have to have that conversation. I've got the yeah. list here. I think there was some confusion about that. And I had a conversation with Mark. So so I don't take Bob Weiss out. I leave no, him in there. No. Yeah. Right. And then, mm -hmm. for example, I know that in Area 42, Maya has said that Ajax Pickering Toastmasters has no meetup account. They're interested. And I've got the name of the VPPR. But when I look in, the previous president from 2019 was a co-organizer. And it says, I'm currently the president of Ajax Pickering Club. Mm -hmm. Right. So he is a previous co-organizer. So I guess there's that follow-up of removing people after their tenure? Yes, yes, because they can easily, because technically, once the, once the other person becomes a co-organizer, they can remove that other person as a co-organizer. Or okay. they can notify me and say, I would like to be removed. Because some of the people that end up starting it, they end up just staying there, even yeah. though there's a different VP of PR and they just keep going with it, right? So there, there could be some of that going on or there could yeah. be the fact that they- So they stay on there and then maybe we leave it to the club to, to yeah. remove the person or, okay. So yeah. I'll just make a note of who they are. Okay. Okay, thank you. Hey, Grace, it's, it's, so I can understand. It, has Omar set up that, over, that umbrella account yet for, for division A or not? As I hope. far as I know, it was a work in progress. I don't know if he has actually officially set it up yet. I haven't heard anything back from him, but maybe if you want to contact him, because it does exist. It's just that he said he hasn't done much with it. Right. So I don't know if since the workshop, he has done something more with it or not. So it might be a matter of like touching base with him to see what's going on exactly uh, with that. Great. I'll do that. Thank you. Yeah. Grace. I, I got... Yes. Sorry, go ahead. I want to... oh, yeah. Sorry for cutting go you off. Ahead. Okay. Yeah, so. I'm looking at the meetup account for Division D, right? Okay. And all these shows, if you want, I can share my screen. You can, so yes, you can... that would be great. So you, you'll see my screen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So I'll, all I see is Toastmasters District 60 Division D, right? Mm -hmm. But okay. when you showed us your screen, mm -hmm. you showed us your, your club, right? And that was one of the division E ones, yes. Yeah. Right. So if, say, for example, one of my clubs in my division wants to create their own meetup, do they, mm -hmm. do they create their own meetup account or do they piggyback on this? No, they piggyback on this. So what you will do is 
whichever appointed member of the club wants to do it, say the mm -hmm. VP of PR, they join this club, you make them a co-organizer, and then they could create their events here. Just like Onita. how you saw Embassy Onita. has... Yeah, right? only, so they only can create the events. They can't have the name on the main mm -hmm. page. That's right. No, but it will okay. show up on the individual events. Just how you okay. saw Embassy Toastmasters okay. on that event. So right. we'll show them in the event listing. Okay, got you. Gotcha. Yeah. And then Mohan and Grace, it was really good seeing that Mohan because it said Division D. And I think yeah. we went through a loop last year where we said calling it Division D or Division A or Division whatever was not such a great idea because that only means something to us. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean it's anything true. to anybody on meet yeah, coming into meet up fresh. It, it is that's true. That's why the, the, the Oshawa Peterborough one was great because it gave you some locality. Yeah. Yeah, because that's what, because when we were setting it up, um, when we were thinking of titles, Gilles, who was the Division E director at the time, he's like, I don't want to use Division E because no one knows who that, what that means. And the one thing is for your individual groups, because when I was looking at the group too, I was like thinking, no one knows what Division A, B, C, whatever is. But that's why it's so important in your, um, when you're creating the group and the subjects that you have are so important to make sure Toastmasters is in it. So if someone just puts in Toastmasters, it'll still come up, even though it has those names. Gotcha. So it's very important to have that in there. Because I think, because I honestly, when I was first searching to see if I could find the other groups, I just put in Toastmasters and they did come up because they probably have that in the subject. In yeah, the, but you have problems searching my group, right? Uh, I know. Yeah. Yes, that was hard because I had to end up asking. Could you just send the yeah, link? So, so yeah. What, so what? So, was there anything I can do so that it's easy to be easily searchable? For that, I think it comes back to the algorithm because, for instance, like when I was first searching, I couldn't find any of the groups on my computer. When I searched it on my phone, they all popped up except for oh, a couple. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I don't know if it's a search algorithm because I know historically I have received emails from other people saying, when I search on my computer, I get this. But when I search on my phone, I get this. Why isn't it the same? And it's like, I don't know how they set it up for okay, each okay. of the different okay. things. Sorry. I understand that. Okay. Yeah. Grace, is there a way to see the email address of the people that joined? Now, I did get a question like that at the workshop. And the thing is, I never found a problem with that because I even asked people, email me through the thing with your email address and the message and everything like that so I could see it. And we never had that problem. So I don't know what's going on because <laughs> I was trying to figure that out. No, I, I meant um, just at the website itself because if oh, I okay. went to the profile of the individuals, I'm wondering, is there a way to see their email address? No, no. not okay. that way. No, no. But usually okay. whenever you get a response and it gets sent to your email, you're able to respond back through that. Okay. I, I yeah. found out why I didn't get notification of new members. Apparently okay. it was a selection in the profile. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, it was off. Okay. <laughs> So I apologize for the influx of messages you'll probably get now, but that's okay. Because <laughs> yes, it is good to know who's coming through because if you find a lot of new people are coming through, you can communicate them with them or send a group email if you notice you're getting a lot of new members to the group in general. So in case you have a big event, like for any individual event, you guys as co-organizers could send a message to the whole group, like for instance, for the Pickering to Ajax, I mean Pickering to Oshawa, they had 228 people listed there. So if you have an event coming up, you can send all 228 a notification saying this, uh, talking about your club, saying this is, say, embassy, it's like, this is what's going on. Like for instance, the advertisement of when they had that discounted rate in January, they could have sent out a group email to all the members to check out our club, because right now we have whatever going on, right? And that could maybe get some of the people. Now, I do admit, some of those 220 people, they may have never went to a Toastmasters meeting because they could have just been like, ooh, that group looks great, and just click on it to add it to their list, and they may never actually go to a meeting. It happens. Don't be discouraged by that. I know, for instance, I am helping 
one club, well, two clubs, because we're doing a joint venture at the moment. So it's Carissa Lake, So Sasters, and Naturally Speaking. They stood on Meetup, and the next week they had three possible guests coming. Now, th and they actually were able to communicate with them. Now, one thing I do encourage, when somebody RCPs, send them the link right away. Or you could have it in your actual event listing where if someone RCPs, they automatically get the link sent to them. You can send it up that way when you're creating your event. I encourage you to do that. Yes, ask questions if you want, but first, send out the link. Because I know so some people they are like, oh, I sent them a question, and depending on how they answered, I'll send them the link. And I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> it's like, because that could put them off, right? So mm -hmm. only send out the link first. I'm like, you can ask as many questions as you want after you send out the link. But in a way, you're auditioning for them. And in a way, they're auditioning for you. But you need them more than they need you. <laughs> so it's like, send out the link first. <laughs> And I think that's one of the, the issues is it is sometimes the clubs make it difficult mm -hmm. to actually um, attend. attend. So yeah. I, I, I sent a, a reply to, I think it was TELUS. Um, yeah, you know what? I'll come and hop on your meeting. And I think it was Tuesday night. And there was a little thing that said link to meeting. And so I said, okay, like it wasn't a Zoom link, but I, I figured it was, you know, kind of a hyperlink that was underneath. And I get on and that little link is there and I click on it and nothing. Oh, okay. I okay. think the, the best system that I've had with trying to join a club meeting was um, Bay Street Breakfast. Theirs was very, it, there was a process and it all went through and, you know, and I got uh, the Nothing link to do with me, Jennifer, but uh, some good people there. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's, there's a few times I've tried to attend a meeting, but I, the, the, I get lost in trying to actually get the link. Uh, just to tag on to what Grace said, um, Embassy did get a member out of Meetup. We were only on Meetup for a couple of days and we got a member and we chartered on Sunday. We got a member from that. She attended, yay, and she attended and she joined. And she started participating the first meeting she arrived at. And she was signed up for a role the next week and then she was signed up for an icebreaker. Like she just jumped right in. She was looking for something. She was looking for Toastmasters. So we were lucky that she we we're the one she found. But it is interesting. Like it is amazing how many people are out there and, and searching and yep. what does it matter if they come to the meeting and they don't come back? It's not, they're not eating our food. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't even care if they ate your food. <laughs> you wouldn't even care. Like, but you know, it's, you know, so what if they come? Like if they come and they don't join, you know, yeah, it's okay. okay. But make it as easy as you can. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if I reply, yeah. yeah, I'm interested, just send them the link and don't have a yeah. password and that's, you know, you get messed up because you, you get on and then they ask for a password. I don't have a password. Mm -hmm. so. that's, that's all right, Wendy. And the, the reason that we have 37 members is because it's damned easy to come yeah. into a meeting. Mm -hmm. It was. I, I have a question and maybe related to Andrew in some ways. Um, and, Andrew, you have your son, no, you have your Bay Street uh, breakfast meetup. And you're also part of Division F. And I'm wondering, is there a way to somehow link them? Like, no? Don't do that. Don't do that. They, they've got a system going, you know, and they pay for their own. Okay. So you don't, you don't want to, you can, you can get advice from them on how, how you're making it work. Or maybe Andrew could do a, a little meeting with some of the other, you know, club uh, members from the other clubs in F to say, hey, you know, we've got a club that's doing really well on Meetup. Take it down to a micro micro level. It's actually Vipul Jain, who's our VP PR, um, who declares himself the laziest person in the world. So he wants systems that are no effort whatsoever. And Meetup is perfect from his point of view. Uh, he doesn't do anything you recommend, Grace. He does not post every week. He doesn't <laughs> post photographs or news or anything like that. It's just, here's, this week there's a meeting. 
this week there's a meeting this week there's a meeting and it's just relentless and that's that's key as well it's being there yes and i'm getting those meet though i'm getting those invites every week <laughs> just so you know they're working join the club, wendy join the club <laughs> you guys got I'm a not allowed. you guys got a fantastic website though bay street breakfast club i like your website it's awesome I'm not a fan of it, but uh, but great. Thank you. <laughs> Arthur, Arthur? Well, I know you do a better job with the, with the districts. No, not you. I mean, I mean, uh, you're a newsletter guy. Okay, sorry, my apologies. But it looks nice. I mean. Arthur, is any of this helping you? Well, I managed to add myself to the Division G. That means I could add Bastion <laughs> and uh, Esther <laughs> next. But... That's provided they have had to go through that uh, the Google link that, that you have where they would have to create their profile first before they can come in. So uh, they, they both will be helping, but I will see if anybody else wants to help. But they're the both the, the only ones that put their hands up. So that's good. So we can move on from, from there. What do we do next now? <laughs> <laughs> so Arthur, have you ever created an event on the meetup group? Meetup, no. Eventbrite, yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know. Maybe just as a trial run, did you want to share your screen and maybe create an event? Yeah, sure. I'll be the yeah? guinea pig. Yeah. All yeah. right. <laughs> okay, I'll pick my... Da, da, da. So which one should I use? My ID or the Division G ID? Either, mine. Whichever one. You can yeah, use I'll use your own, yeah. I use my because that would because most people would have that. I will bring it up, block you. Okay, so and I changed myself to have co organizer now. So, okay, share screen, look for the yellow. Okay, can everybody see the screen? Mm -hmm. Okay. There you go. I mean, I'm excited that we are in now, so yeah. <laughs> um, All right, so if you go to the event. Okay. and then go to create an event. Is mine slow? Or Maybe I might double click. Okay, that's, that's oh, create an event, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I don't have a, pro, a pass event, okay. All right. It's safe, right? I'm not gonna kill, I, I mean, I'm sharing this with uh, Carrie and yeah, Joe. Yeah. So you're fine to create an event because when you create an event, it'll actually show the person who created it. So you would be the host. But if you have multiple people that are watching it within your particular group, you could add them as a host as well. Okay. Just testing. Yeah. Yes, yes. So I would always suggest use the upload photo there because if you do have a nice photo of your club or something that relates to your actual event, it's always good to add because I think it catches people's eyes better than if you don't have anything at all. Okay, it's just a test one. Yes, yes, it's just a test. <laughs> <laughs> so see here, it shows the option to add a Zoom link. So when anybody RSVP, the Zoom link will automatically be sent to them shortly after. Oh, so that's how that works. Yes. Okay. I thought it was visible, but it's, so when they RSVP, that actually yes. sends right to them. Yes. Okay, so we want to start doing that. Yeah, because you can do that, because okay. I know some people, since they're probably using a private one, not like, say, a company one or anything like that, they don't necessarily want their link out there. So, like, for our, we put it out when, when we see if people RSVP, like, the day before, whatever, we set it out because we don't because they don't want it like out there out there for the public so we never yeah. add it actually in our event but you can there is that option 
Okay. Okay. Uh, so I'll just say create right now. Well, it won't let you create because all the information is in. But <laughs> if, if, um, if, um, if you were like, well, you could technically do it and then just delete it after, but it does give you a preview and then it gives you the opportunity to publish it. And when you publish it, it does um, sometimes in the corner or after you publish it, it prompts you, do you want to announce the event now? Because you could actually wait and announce at a different time. But historically, if you set it up to happen every week, it'll automatically just announce at whatever preset time it has in the system to announce the meeting coming up. Like for instance, I know this was ours because we have it set to show up weekly. Like a day or so after our last event, it'll advertise the next one for us. Okay. Um, so I can, what do, what So if the... you go further down. Yeah on the screen it shows like you could set it up to repeat an event and if you're setting it up like if you put the x over to the right there it gives you the option for and if you do where it says every week if you do the down arrow there for every week see you can set it up for every two weeks or every month on whatever mm. particular day that you select right so that's always good so you can actually set it up for every week if you have weekly meetings and then just make changes to each individual event if a change needs to be done. But you'll just have it all set up and then technically you could walk away, but I would encourage you to always make changes if need be. <laughs> but you could set it up so it makes it easier because you can make changes to each individual event. And yes, you could ask members questions. You can already have that set up. So when they RSVP, they request questions. And you can set an attendee limit, but I wouldn't suggest it unless you think you're going to get an onslaught of people <laughs> wanting to get in on something and you want to manage how many people attend. Okay, so there's some features yeah. here. Yeah. So yeah, if you have an event where it does cost, I do know if you do set up an event, I believe that Meetup does take a percentage, I believe. I've never actually done it, so I don't know how that works, but I think there is a percentage overall with like the organizer. It's a logical assumption. Yeah. So yes, you could add event host. Okay, this is where you say there's four groups and yeah. Well, like for instance, it has you, Arthur, and say you had different um, other members in the group, you could add them as hosts as well. You could actually start typing in their name and if they're a part of the group, it could pop up and you could add them as a co-host to the event. They're not yet. I'm WhatsApp. Yeah, them. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when, uh, when I get a moment, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so assume I create an event yes. and publish it, and that's it? Yes. Yep. And you can announce it at that time, or it'll just naturally announce once it gets closer to the event. And one of the things I'd recommend, as I saw your heading Division G, if you're going to put in a division, um, put, put a parameter of the boundaries or, you know, West Central... Toronto from here to here. So people know that this is the area that, not that it matters anymore in virtual, it's not a big deal, but you know, eventually if we do go hybrid or back, on, back in person, they'll have some idea of what kind of, where their location is of the club that they are eventually going to meet in person at. We had to make that change, Wendy, for embassy because we had embassy Toastmasters and it was someone else who said, hey, can you add Oshawa to it? Because there's an embassy Toastmasters in Hong Kong. Yeah. Oh. Right. So and also it doesn't say anything about the city. So we changed it to embassy Toastmasters, comma, Oshawa. Yeah. Just so that people knew where we are. Yeah. Hmm. 
Carrie, how are you doing? I'm fine. I'm just going to, like I said, um, I've gotten very little interest to date, but I'm going to um, send an email to my area directors. And if that doesn't work, then I'm going to reach out to the uh, VPPRs because I know when I did my, my training um, two weeks ago and I mentioned there was meetup for each account, everybody looked stunned. They had no idea what I was like. Really? <laughs> yeah. So, so that kind of told me something right there. They, like most people had no idea that they have free meetup accounts. Well, even I'm scrolling through here on the events yeah. under the um, Division E umbrella, right? Because I'm just double checking. I'm kind of cross-referencing and going, okay, who is the organizer? Do I have the right organizers and an old organizer? And I'm only seeing like, you know how, Grace just showed how you can do like every week, whatever. And so the events are in there. I'm only seeing Embassy, Spotlight, Whitby Intrepid, who has its own account, Brooklyn, Oshawa. And it just keeps Osh scrolling through those clubs. I'm not seeing anybody else. Oshawa number I one has their own, I believe. And um, what was the other club's name? It's not with me right now but there are some that do have it and the thing is i always encourage them yes you have your own but still don't join the division e one because i've noticed in recent weeks we see more traffic on our division e one because with the intrepid also posts there than on our original one and it's different people exactly. they're not the same people so mm -hmm. even if they have their own still encourage them to join because it's free why not um still encourage them to join that one because you'll get different people Right. Like, for instance, there was one particular person, I think her name was Joan. She joined um, RSVP every event. Joan. In Joan, that's it. Okay. She's every already RSVP to ours twice. We've, yes. we've only oh, been she on came to She came to the With the Intrepid one because she RSVP'd to, and, and to every event in the group. So I don't know if she was just shopping, like looking at different ones, which is also a good thing to have a group because they see all the groups that are in the area that they could possibly try. And they're basically shopping for whatever club and hopefully find one that works best for them. And it's a one-stop shop because they'll have selection, right? That's why I'm always encouraging, even if your club already has one, because many people are like, our club has, you don't need another one. Yeah. But it's like, it's free and you get more exposure. Mm -hmm. And please let me know if I'm talking fast. Sometimes I do. <laughs> Great, you always talk fast. <laughs> it's, all it's all good. It's okay, we, we speak grace. <laughs> So I think, Grace, the other club that has their own is Whitby Pros. Yes, they do have their own. And they just got a notice to renew. Yeah, um, but Daniel, their director, he said he looked into that and they said it's all fine. They didn't know that message was popping up. Yeah. Okay. So Andrew and, and you know, everybody else that ha that's mentioning they have their own account. Their own account has three, I guess, separate profiles that can be used under that account yes you can create three different groups which at first yeah. i didn't even know that existed <laughs> and when we did find i i only found that out when i created the one for division e and i assume like a lot of other groups probably don't know that they have that option because you could actually end up sharing an account and reduce the cost if you want to go and get your own right because we have two other ones like we've actually tried partnering up with other clubs but it didn't end up working out at this time, but maybe it will now that Meetup has gotten more noticed <laughs> by people. But that's another way to cut down your costs because it's around 240 for the whole thing with exchange rate and everything like that. If you separate between three clubs, it's a whole lot cheaper. That's a good point. Yeah. And that's how we got started in division uh, in District 60. The district didn't pay for any. And so we really encouraged three clubs to come together to buy into one meetup account that then the three of them could share. Hmm. That's a good point. People, I gotta leave. Thank you very much, Grace. It was wonderful to- You're welcome. Know. If you have any more questions, let me know. I did put my okay. email address. Thank you. That's Thank great. you, Chris, Thank for organizing you. this. Good night, Thanks for people. being here, Mohan. No problem. Bye, Thanks. Mohan. Bye. Good night. Have a great night. Same to y'all.
Oh, cool. Look at that, so, Arthur's got an event. Way to go. I, no, no, I, I need to find a picture first. It's almost okay. like Eventbrite. <laughs> Hey, I just start. It's similar. I used it's Google similar. Images and I just went and found a Toastmaster image that looked good. Uh, I'll use the same picture from Eventbrite. Yeah. Sure, why not? So, Arthur, if you go into Toastmasters.org on Brand Portal, there's a whole series of images there as well you can use. Ah. Uh, That's where I got the images for our different groups in the Divinity one. Mm -hmm. but, so, but normally um, clubs would post like real pictures, no? Like for yeah, events? From, for the headings of the different oh, um, okay, groups, okay, I okay. use okay. that. But yes, yeah, for, for individual events, I encourage you to use your own pictures from your club if you can. Yeah, because my, my home club, we have our own meetup account and we take pictures. We tell everybody we're taking pictures yeah. and, then, and then we load a pile of them in after every meeting. That's excellent. <laughs> yeah, no, That's such a great thing. That's right? <laughs> That is music to Grace's ears. Yeah, I know. So we've had um, my home club. We've had our own account, and it's been it's been our it's been gold. It's been gold. It's we've got like I don't know how many members make half over half maybe to three quarters because they found us a meetup. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. It's it's the best thing that we've ever done. Yes. For sure. So, same with us, Kerry. We get a minimum of two visitors a meeting, and I think our maximum was seven. You mean new new people that found you? Uh, guests yeah. who came along to a meeting, just almost unannounced. And and yeah. you, and some of them even you get them as members, right? Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we've found that as well, and we found um, be, during this COVID thing that we're getting a lot of people from out of the area. Like we have our latest member, he's from Quebec, from Montreal. This is Montreal. So, and the only reason they found us because we asked him is because they found us on Excellent. Yeah, but it's always important to ask people when they do visit your group how they found you. We always, then... we always ask our guests, how did you find our club? Mm -hmm. And 90, like over three quarters of them are meetup. Yeah. Excellent. And for those that are new to meetup, don't get discouraged if you don't get people right away. Because I know one club that I was working with started meetup, and I think it was like a month in, and one of the executives was like, honestly, if we don't get people from this with in the next couple of weeks, I say we cut our losses. And funny enough, that night they had five people from meetup <laughs> after the reading. It was like, yes, we've proven our point. <laughs> and, and, and I... <laughs> And I think to your point, people are, someone said it, people are looking for things to do mm -hmm. and, and, you know, things to join and people are looking, one of the, they're looking at meetup to find these things. So why yeah. not let them, why not let them find you? They join for a reason, right? Right, oh. right. But, but, you know, they're, they're looking for something mm -hmm. online or something. And we had one member and that's what she said. She was looking for an online club because she lives in Kitchener and she just joined last week our club. Oh that's nice. Yes and meet up again. I I, I could go on all night but um yes. <laughs> but it's it it works. It works. Excellent. So division directors do you feel like you've got a better understanding of what you're doing with Meetup now. It's great to be told hey here's a tool. It's really yep. handy to know how to use it and that's the purpose here. The answer is yes for me. Excellent. Yes. Yeah, I feel better now. Okay, then I have a call to action for you. I oh know you have a division director's WhatsApp group. Put a <laughs> shout out in there to each other. Somebody oh. let it slip, not mentioning any names. Oh, who, who was it? Who was it? <laughs> so not telling. Give totally the, not give telling. Us the initials. Come on. <laughs> you all have different initials. That's not fair. I'm not. I'm not snitching on my sources here. I am my sources. Oh, I might lose sources. <laughs> but I know you've got this group. So put something out there. Let the division directors who weren't here tonight know that you got something valuable. Share what it was if that works for you. And make sure they know that we're going to have this video available on the district YouTube channel, that Grace is going to have some follow-up information for you, and encourage them to help their own clubs by getting them on to meet up where appropriate.
because we really want to see clubs growing in District 60. That's an important area for every single one of us at District. It's important for all of you. Let's work together to make that happen. Grace, thank you so much for being here and leading us through this tonight. I definitely could not have done this without you. <laughs> well, and Wendy, thank you, thank you for being here to support us. Oh, no, I, I, this has been great for me because the first thing I thought of was all those clubs that haven't got eight members. We're going to be looking mm -hmm. at those, and getting them on Meetup. Mm -hmm. And the ones that have eight to 12. Absolutely. Okay. This is this is this is uh, this is very important, and uh, I'll be. I, we've got to. I'm going to have to send out an email to Omar, Richard, and Menard, and Joe, and uh, get them on a call. They've got. I've got to really make sure that they they utilize this. All right. Excellent. Thank well, you. Well, Wendy, I'm going to be chasing that. Omar because I've just sent a, a, an email <laughs> to, to the two VPPRs of my community <laughs> clubs both of whom have 11 members and they desperately need another five. Yeah. Then we stand a chance of getting them distinguished this year. Exactly. As soon and as they could get their five this month because this month is uh, Talk Up Toastmasters. Talk Up Toastmasters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I've copied Omar on the email so he knows I'm active on this uh, particular issue. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Thank I know you. he planned to attend tonight. He did reply to my follow-up and mentioned that he'd been called into a last-minute work meeting. These things happen, and if you can support him in that, Andrew, I know he'll appreciate that as well. All right, I'm going to turn off recording unless we've got anything else that we specifically need to share. And Arthur, you can probably take your screen down.